Oh my God, you guys, you guys set the comment section on fire for my video yesterday. Um, I think I had over 150 comments, which I'm pretty sure is close to double the previous high on any of my other videos. Um, and that's my favorite part of releasing a video. I know a lot of people watch the view count and I watch the comment count and I try to get in there and respond to as many of you as I can, uh, clear up any, you know, mistakes that were made as far as, cause these videos aren't scripted. This, uh, this is, I literally just turn on the camera and start talking. So I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to say a little thing that I didn't mean to say it exactly in that way and that sort of thing. So, um, and then of course I, you know, try to be funny and, and engaging and all that stuff. And, and, uh, I enjoy that a lot. And my favorite thing about yesterday was there was no name calling. Not everybody agreed. Matter of fact, there was quite a bit of disagreement, but nobody was disrespectful to anyone else. Um, everybody just had a good time and had a good conversation. And uh, that's just absolutely amazing to me um, that we've been able to build that type of, of community here already at my channel. And I'm, I'm super excited about that going into the future. So thank you guys so much yesterday all the engagement all the all the comments and all that stuff and for staying respectful um so awesome so with that said we're going to get into castle sieges today um, i know we already talked about my experience in the castle siege and we've also watched the video of of that steven released um but as the week has gone on, I've had time to really think about it and, and put a lot of things into perspective. And I'm really starting to feel like this castle siege system might be kind of revolutionary. So let's get into it. What you think, what you think about when you're born into a fight? All right, guys. So as we go through this, just keep in mind that this video that you're watching right up here, that siege, um, it is not the siege that I took part in. Um, I was in a siege test that was a couple of hours, maybe three hours before this one. And the test that I was in had somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 to 200 more players in it. Um, Steven wanted to have a little bit more of a controlled environment uh, for the test, you know, the, for the video that he was going to put out in the live stream um, so that he could show off certain aspects of the sieges. And, you know, that's fine, but it's not representative of the siege that I was in. And I don't think it's at all representative of what a siege is going to actually be like, um, just given that there's going to be so many more players. There's going to be like 200 more players per side uh, than, than what was uh, shown here in this video. So just keep that in mind as we go through. Um, so let's start by making sure that we're all on the same page in terms of how the sieges are set up. So to start with, as so at some point once the uh, after launch, we are going to be able to declare sieges on nodes. Now, we don't have all those specifics. We don't know exactly when that's going to happen, um, all the the what all the lead up to that is going to be. But once it does happen, I'm sure it will start happening with some degree of regularity. Um, once that's once that has been declared, then people can sign up to be defenders or attackers of this node. And one quick side note to that is that citizens of the castle and uh, citizens of the three nodes that are associated with that castle cannot sign up to attack the castle. You can't attack your own castle or your own nodes. Kind of evident, but just to clarify and put that out there. Other than that, anybody can sign up. There's 250 people per side can sign up. That is the maximum. Um, and then over the course of the next month, the attacking team will go about the process of trying to de-level the nodes that are associated with the castle that they want to siege. And each week, they have basically have one week to de-level a node from whatever level it is down to zero. Um, and if they do that, then they move on to the next one. If they don't, then the siege fails and there's a one-month cooldown on uh, uh, starting another siege. If they actually do succeed, they move to the next one and then the next one and the next one. And then once they have all three nodes down, then they get to actually go after the castle itself and try to take the castle and become the new, you know, lords of the castle. That's how that works. Once you actually get to the castle stage, this is the setup of what's going on. There is a castle. The castle has a throne in it and three entrances and exits exits to um, that inner area. Once you go outside of that inner area, you are in a very large courtyard that is also walled off. So it's effectively an inner castle and an outer castle. The outer castle also has three doors. 
Outside of the castle, there is a siege camp or a forward base camp, if you want to call it that, for the attackers. And there are three raid-sized dragons that take, you know, I would assume somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 40 players uh, to kill. And if you kill them, you get a buff. We don't know what that buff is. I assume it's going to be a pretty powerful buff just given uh, the risk you take when you try to go kill a dragon. Um, there are also other mobs out there. For example, there were fire dragons that the the defending team or the attacking team was basically dragging into the uh, into the gates and they would get hit with our AOEs and then we would have these big dragons on us that had like 40,000 health. So um, they're out there as well. That's the setup. The win conditions for the attacking team is they have to get inside of the castle, get inside of, inside of the inner castle, interact with the throne, and uh, and not be a, being attacked or pulled or whatever while they interact with the throne. They fill up the little bar and they win the castle. Um, there are some control points. Now, as, a, as since I was a defender, I didn't get to see these or interact with them or anything, so I don't really know exactly where they are, but I do know it sets where your team can spawn. So you as you push further into the castle, you can spawn closer and closer and closer um, to the point where I believe Stephen was saying there is a control point point in the courtyard so the defense could be spawning or the offense i'm sorry could be spawning in the courtyard um so the win conditions for the defense they actually have two win conditions the first is they can leave the comfort of their castle and go to the siege camp and there's going to be an npc there like a lieutenant a raid lieutenant or 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 a captain or something like that kill him and they automatically win or they can run out the clock. There is a one hour timer on the offense to, to claim this castle. And if they don't do it, then the defense wins. So that is the setup. That is the, the entire thing of what's going on. So why does this set the siege sieges in this game apart from Elder Scrolls Online or or Guild Wars 2 or even Dark Age of Camelot who, who pretty much invented the, the Castle Siege uh, system as far as I know about. Um, how, does, how does this set it apart? So this is what I think. And keep in mind as we're, as we're talking about this that, you know, as somebody who's trying to create content for this game, I have spent a fair amount of time researching the different... Uh, aspects and 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 uh systems inside of this game and i read about this castle siege system months ago and i went eh. like i felt like the elite players are going to play in the castle siege warfare game and at my age kids and all that i'm not going to be an elite player like i just i don't have that anymore um so I'm, it's not for me. I'm not going to play in it. Whatever. That was my thought. Then I was involved in this one test castle defense that didn't even matter. And now I'm thinking, I kind of want to go live in one of those nodes that's controlled by a castle just so that I can be a part of castle defense. So keep in mind, as we're talking about this, like I've run that gamut. I've made that huge swing. Um, so... With that in mind, it to me it is m mainly the combination of the one month cooldown and the one hour time limit that sets this whole thing apart. It sets a, a events in motion that make the siege feel so much more impactful, and everything you do so much more impactful. That's going to really set this siege uh, system apart. So let me give you an example. Think about those those people in Elder Scrolls Online and Guild Wars 2 who kind of, for one reason or another, become designated as like siege captains or like or or realm captains. Like, you know, you go there and they're a lot of times their name will be a different color. Um, if their name isn't a different color, it doesn't matter. People follow them. If they say, hey, go take that castle, they everybody runs and goes and takes that castle because they're like the captain of the realm. Well, think about the long-term ramifications of any decision that they make. There's not any. They, they say, go defend that castle. Everybody runs over there and defends that castle. 
Sometimes they succeed at defending it. Sometimes they don't. Don't matter. Take, d- take it back later. It don't, it don't matter. Nothing that they decide to do matters long term. Most of it doesn't even matter short term. Like, eh, whatever. You lost a castle. We're going to take it back. It's literally going to change hands 15 more times this week. He lost it this time. Meh. Um, whereas with this system, every single decision that the siege captains make, and then by proxy on down the line, every single decision that everybody's involved with the attacking and the defense make is going to matter. It is going to have long-term benefits and consequences. Every single one of them. If a siege captain gets arrogant and thinks now let's let's make a let's say it's the defense so uh, uh you know a captain of the guard or something like that somebody who's taken on the role of of a person who's who's making the decisions on how we're going to defend this castle they get arrogant and they think this team doesn't have what it takes to break through the walls so what i want to do is i want to take two 25 man raid teams sneak them out both sides of the castle and go kill the dragons and get two buffs so that we can just end this thing. And then as soon as that happens, the attacking team was kind of playing possum to some degree. They see the other teams leave. They don't chase them. And then they bust through the door and, and kamikaze in and they're able to get in easy because now the, the defending team is down 50 players and they just go all the way in and get the castle and take it. That decision that guy made means that all those people who lost stuff in the in the month long lead up in the siege when all the nodes were getting deleveled, they're going to have to all go find new places to live because they're not going to be welcome at that node anymore. Um, obviously, that guild and that alliance and the people that were controlling that castle, they no longer have power. They're no longer going to have control of that tax revenue and how the area and the region develops. And that now becomes a new setup. That decision that that guy made was a was a major one and it had real life, real ramifications to it. And so and because of that, because every decision you make has so much uh, uh, riding on it, the adrenaline as is higher. Everything is heightened. The feeling, the excitement, all of it is heightened. Um, so as we were doing this test, I tried to put myself mentally in the space of someone who got with a, an alliance or a guild or a group of people that were trying to take a castle, and we lived in the nodes that uh, that were surrounded by, the, by that castle or that that surrounded that castle, and we'd successfully got the castle, and and we'd spent time building up all our nodes, and we had freeholds, and we had resources stocked here and there, and we'd started started building up the nodes in our image and the way that we wanted it to be built up, and all that stuff. And then somebody came along, and they successfully pushed down all of our nodes, and now we're we're in this castle siege, and we have one hour to save everything, and if we don't, then we'd lose it all. You know, obviously you still have some of your resources and you can just replant your your uh, freehold at a new place if you can get to a new place and afford a new freehold and all of that stuff. But anyway, you're going to lose a giant portion of what you'd worked and given what all you have to have done to even acquire a castle, we worked hard in for a long time. And I put myself in that position. And so it made it... I tried to do that to try to feel what it felt like. And so as this siege was going on, you know, at first they were just hitting one gate and then they were able to bring that gate down with trebuchets. And then they came through the gate and we were repelling them at that gate. You know, we were defending that gate pretty well. And it was for the most part, they weren't coming through. We were doing a pretty good job. And then as that was going on, all of a sudden somebody on Discord's like, oh, they've gotten through the northern gate. And then all of a sudden half the team just splits off and everybody runs over there and everybody's trying to defend that gate now and our defenses are split and sometimes they would rush one gate and sometimes they would rush the other and we'd have to dynamically be adjusting where our where our defense was coming or where the, our defensive strength was. Um, and then a little, a little later they got the other gate down and then so they then they had all three gates down. And at one point they, they decided to go send a team to go try to, to take out a dragon to get a buff because they were having a hard time getting in the gate um, at, inside the courtyard at that point. And I think they failed to get the dragon down. And I know that at one point we sent a team to try to go uh, 
like stop them or whatever. So I don't know if we succeeded in stopping them or they just didn't have enough to take out the dragon. I don't know. Um, but as the time went on, you know, 10 minutes in, I felt safe. 20 minutes in, I felt like, okay, we're doing okay. 30 minutes in, I thought, oh, this is getting bad. 40 minutes in, I thought, it, if we can hold on for 20 more, more minutes, it's going to be a miracle. Like the walls were closing in on us. It was like a vice grip and we couldn't stop it. It was just getting, the, the, the attacking team was getting a little further in and a little further in and they were pushing a little harder and it, you know, it was going crazy. Now, at this point, that's pretty much when Steven turned on invincible mode and he was an attacker and just started running through everybody. And and so then that changed with the defense we were doing, all the tanks. We were pulling Steven over and over and over again um, just to keep him off the throne from interacting with, with the throne. And that changed the dynamic of it. It wasn't, it, it wasn't the same after that. Um, and, you know, I'm not mad at him. A, it was a test. And B, it was funny. I really kind of like uh, the... Steven the prankster vibe he's got going on uh, you know and some of those stories that he told about other pranks that he's done I, it, I like that I think it's pretty funny and so for testing purposes it was it was funny and we all had a good time with it and there was a lot of laughing going on and stuff um, but that changed the vibe but I really do feel like we might have been able to hold out for 20 more minutes there's no way we would have made it for 30 so that hour time limit puts a sense of urgency on the attacker because you have to think so I was putting myself in the in the mindset of a defensive player in that situation and it wasn't until after it was all over and this last week that I've really been thinking about it and I started putting myself in the minds of the offensive player in that situation and it, and you have to think about that like we decided we 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 decided we a, a castle that we wanted to attack we declared that attack we got as many of our people as we could to get involved, you know, be also part of the attacking team. We have 250 people. Well, okay, not, we're not even to that point yet. Then we spent the last month or three weeks systematically deleveling all of their nodes, attacking all of their nodes, getting all their nodes down to zero just so that we can get to this point. And we have one hour, one hour to get in here and interact with that throne and take that castle. And if we can do that, everything changes. Now we're the lords of this area. We control what goes on. We can build these nodes up in our image in the way that we want them to be built up. Everything changes. And if we fail, there's a one month cooldown to try again. And then we have to go through, after the cooldown, we have to go through the three weeks of knocking down and deleveling their nodes just to get back to this point now where you have one hour. So the sense of urgency that you're going to feel as an attacker if you get to this stage, to the stage where you're actually in the castle siege, is going to be overwhelming. There's going to be so much to it. And when I, when I started putting myself in that, that mindset... I was just like, so both sides are going to be desperate. And people, uh, most people get really good at stuff when they get desperate. They start finding all kinds of solutions to problems that they wouldn't have seen if they weren't so desperate. Uh, what's that saying? Necessity is the mother of invention. Um, and you really get into that situation when you're dealing with it, with this, this specific situation. You really are like getting desperate. So... <clears throat> That's why I think this system is just going to blow everybody's mind. Um, the people who who engage in this and get involved with it are just going to be. It's I, I almost feel like there's going to be junkies for castle sieges that go around, and that's what they do. They spend their time attaching themselves to whatever castle siege attack that's going on and try to you know all, they're always involved in that or always involved in defenses like that's kind of how I felt about the defensive side of it and I've always been more of a defensive player like I play tanks almost all the time for example um, and so like that's why I immediately was like can I have another like can you shoot the the uh, the siege directly into my, my arm can we just liquefy it and and put it into my system oh I have to actually play the okay well let's play the game then um, but I'm gonna live in a node where I can play defense that's kind of where I was after just doing it one time um, so um, 
I'm super excited about that part of it, and I'm I'm really excited for you guys to get to see it, and by proxy to get to experience it, because obviously a lot of you aren't going to get to actually uh, play it when this alpha comes up, this the, the visual NDA, NDA comes down. Um, now, I'm not 100% sure about this, but I'm pretty sure I heard Steven say that they're going to be four scheduled tests every single day, siege tests every single day during that month-long alpha when the visual NDA is going to be down. So there's going to be plenty of opportunities for you guys to watch it on stream whether you're watching me or or bard tick or or uh plate or any there's so many just a hero vision there's so many amazing guys that are that are going to be making content for this game um and obviously we'll all be making videos as well so you can watch them here on youtube um so yeah, whether it doesn't matter who you're watching, you're going to get an ability to see it and kind of, like I said, through proxy, feel what we feel when we're in the middle of it. And we were, it was a test. The, kind of a side note, the funny thing was, it was a test that we were doing. And in Discord, people were taking it real seriously and people were even getting salty towards one another. So, like, there was already salt in a damn test that didn't matter, y'all. So, that's how, that's what it's going to be like. Um, I, I'm, I'm so excited for you guys to get to experience that and see it. And, and I think you guys are really, really going to love it. Um, that is going to be it for me today, guys. Tomorrow, I'm going to be putting out a video on how guilds might be getting this thing completely backwards. So if you want to get that video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, all that good stuff. And please, guys, comment on comment on this video like you guys did yesterday. Let's have another discussion uh, in the comment section today. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, and I will see you guys tomorrow.